Hey guys, welcome back to Game Dev Weekly, the weekly show where I do game development. And this week I'll be making rigs for Hydroneer. Uh, what these are, are drivable mining machines that are completely customizable by the player. They're basically built with these square cubes. Each square cube is a different function, which in the end creates a big mining machine when everything's wired up correctly. As well as that, I'm going to be doing fishing. Just a little add-on to throw in the game. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video. I've got the giveaway I do it every week, but also I've got some information about the closed alpha, so stick around for that. Okay, so this week I'm going to look at making massive mining machines that are kind of like the third stage of the game. Uh, so first you've got that manual process, then you've got the equipment that you place down, and then you have a machine that you can build and then move along through rail tracks. What I really want to do with this is just have it as a massive sandbox. So you can make whatever machine you want um, and the limits are quite endless. So uh, first off we need to place down some rail tracks. I've, I've basically just made these uh, models with the help of um, one of my friends uh, Chewy. He's been a great help at uh, helping me make a few of these models as well as some stuff that I've just thrown together with models I've already got. So first I just need to place down some rail tracks and these are the foundation that the vehicle will move on. So right now I've just basically made, uh, I've made improvements to the building system and also made this building system separate for the rig parts. Um, so here are a few of the pieces. So first up we have this wheel um, housing unit. This is basically just the driving power. The bigger the weight, the more of these you'll need. Then next we've got this uh, control panel, I guess you would call it. Um, this is where the player will control a few things. Um, including the speed and also uh, how each of the different parts work. So there'll be buttons on here that the player has to program in by pulling out wires from the back. Um, so I'll add in some wires around the back of here. It's also water powered, so it needs to have a water inlet. Um, so to do that, we've also got this thing right here, which is like our fuel barrel. Um, so the way that this works is it has water. You put water in one end and then it passes the water through um, to whatever it's uh, holding. This is a water powered machine, so you need one of these or at least one uh, minimum of one of these. So next we've got this drill. So this drill is a drill. It destroys the terrain, but also takes in um, the dirt through here and then passes it through this pipe. You'll notice there's a different color between pipes. So this copper color is for dirt and then this brass color is for water. Uh, and then we've got the storage tank as well. Um, so this is what you'd put kind of at the end of your chain. Um, and then there'll be a button here again, just to pour out the dirt. And there's a gauge here that I've finished. That'll give some feedback to the player so they know how much uh, dirt is in there. What we've also got here is the pipe for um, moving dirt along. This works the same as the water pipe. Uh, but it would be for dirt. And this thing is an extension arm, so I want basically players to be able to make cranes. So um, this thing basically expands out so it's twice as long. And then finally, there's this thing, which is the rotor. Um, so you, you would basically be able to make cranes with this as well, where you put a block on top and then you can program this to turn. So that's all the blocks I've got for now. Um, first up, what I'm gonna do is make the uh, the vehicle actually be able to move and then I'll start adding in functionality for everything. About 24 hours has passed since that last clip and uh, I've finished the driving forces in the game. So if I just place down some rail tracks, so you can only, you have to start with having rail tracks to make a rig. Uh, so what I do is whenever I place the first one down, it becomes the kind of the owner of the rig. So if I place the second one down and try and pick up the first one again, it won't actually let me because it's got something attached to it. I'd need to remove this one first and then remove it. Right, so this is a little vehicle, really, really simple stuff. It's just got everything you need to move up and down this uh, short rail track. So if I put the lever that way, it moves that way until it can't move anymore. And then if I move it back, it's the same. So here I'm going to just do a little example of the drill. This is not how to set up the drill. Uh, since it's got a different colored pipe, you actually need a dirt pipe, not water, to take this through. Just for the sake of a demonstration, I've put it in here. So underneath the control panel, there's these little plugs and each plug uh, connects to a different part. So you might have, uh, say, one of them in the drill. You could have another one in the extender or the rotor, whatever part you want. Um, they're completely programmable, I guess. Uh, so the switches just do an on and off and then the levers do uh, kind of an on 
fully and then like a reverse as well. So I'll just take this one right here. And uh, I need to kind of figure this out, but I want to have a wire coming from it. But right now it's not coming from, from it. And then I plug this in over here. And that should be plugged in. So again, that will kind of, that will come, I don't know why it's appearing here, but it should come down from this right here and plug straight into there. And then I can switch it on using this right here. And it's not looking so good. So this is an issue that I'm be having and I need to look into how to fix it. Got a pretty good idea, but we'll see. So the pivot point of this drill is right over here. And this means whenever I'm moving it around, um, my camera is always tracing to this position right here to actually move it. Um, and so when we are rotating it, we're actually rotating it from this position. So it's spinning around this one location right here. So what I need to do is this position needs to actually be here. So when I'm spinning it, it's spinning from this position. Um, and the reason why it's down here is because if you look at this in a grid, 100 units lengthways and 100 units tall, and 100 units wide as well to make it 3D, um, this is being moved to stay in that grid to be there. Um, so what I need to do is I can't actually change the mesh, uh, the mesh's pivot position. I need to add a completely new mesh. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this new mesh and then I'm going to hide it so it only appears when the item is placed down and it's hidden when you're moving it around and when it's thrown on the floor. So what it's going to do is when the item is placed down it's going to hide the mesh that you see when you're placing it and it's going to add a completely new mesh and put it in that position. So that means when we go to spin it, it spins from this position and then when we pick, when we pick it back up again we do the reverse. Hide this one and unhide the other one and then hopefully that will make it look moderately better than it does right now. So I've almost finished the rig system and I want to take a little bit of a break before I test it and um, work on it a little bit more. And uh, while I'm taking a break, I'm going to be working on something completely different uh, that isn't really going to be a part of the main game. It's just a little fun thing that I can do to, you know, maybe put in as a little mini game. And essentially what it is, is it's a fishing uh, mini game, kind of like you would see in World of Warcraft or Minecraft, something that I've taken inspiration from. Um, I really enjoy fishing in those games and I kind of just wanted to do it just for the sake of uh, having fun with it. So uh, here's a fishing rod that I've made and as you can see the it's got a little cable component in it as um, it's fishing wire and uh, it's a little bit volatile, it kind of flings around everywhere. So I need to figure out how to do this. Um, now by itself, uh, what, you know, this comes with the engine being able to create something like this. Um, but the problem with it is its velocity right now is in its local space, uh, sorry, it's in its world space, and it needs to be in its local space. So when it's moving around, it doesn't take this velocity and add it to its current velocity, it'll just, um, pretty much keep it still really, but I really like how it has this kind of sag into it um, So before I actually work on any of the mechanics I'm just gonna make sure this cable component looks a bit better and to do that I'm gonna have to do a little bit of editing the engine code So uh, I'll do that and then I'll work a bit more on uh, how it actually works Okay, so after some work I finished the fishing rod um, I'm pretty happy with how it came out uh, so I improved the way that these uh, cables actually look, so they kind of, they can still wiggle around quite a bit, but when you're walking it doesn't actually um, take the velocity from the player anymore, so that's nice. Uh, anyway, so if I cast it out, uh, I haven't got a bobber model modelled in yet, but I've just put this cube here. Um, so when that kind of pops up, then you've got a certain amount of time, I think it's about half a second right now, but it might change later on, to actually pull the bobber up and then you get a fish. Now there's different rarities of fish, there's four types um, and each one depending on their size will give you a different uh, price uh, for, uh, for a sell price. Um, so here I've got a yellow one and a blue one uh, and there's a red one and a green one as well. So I'm just gonna move on next to the rigs. Now they're finished I need to do my first test so you guys are gonna see me do the first test now
All right, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, what it's going to do is it's got this extender piece here. So this block right here can extend to double its size. Um, and then that will hopefully push the drill downwards and be able to cut deeper into the uh, terrain. Also, I'm going to be driving back and forward. So hopefully there'll be a big gap of um, dirt that I've collected right here. Um, this will travel through these copper pipes all the way into the storage. Um, and also we've got the fuel tank right here, which is completely fueled up and um, that will be able to give us driving power. Uh, so I've added three lights in here. You can't see them because they're not active right now, but that'll basically tell me if I'm at either at the end of the track, if my fuel is completely out, um, and also if uh, I'm overweight. So each of these carriages can only carry a certain amount of weight. So that's why I've got uh, four of them right here, which I think should be enough. If not, then I'll be able to see relatively easy. So if I turn that on, so yep, I can move absolutely fine. If I hit the end of the track, there you go, you can see that light is flashing on. Uh, let's just do that again. So yeah, that tells me that I'm at the end of the track. Anyway, um, let's turn the drill on. That is starting to make a little bit of a hole. And we'll put it downwards. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe instead of that, we will take that off. I think what I'll do is I'll actually put that onto here. Maybe instead of it just extending the entire way, we'll have it so it extends slowly if the switch is on instead. Um, anyway, so that's the lever. The lever's now on, so I'm going to switch the fuel back on. Looks like we've actually run out of fuel since that water fuel is on. Maybe I need to change the fuel so it doesn't, uh, doesn't require as much fuel to move around. Um, so let's drop this down. And as you can see, we're digging into the terrain here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Turn that off. We might be able to. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, we need to change the fuel, change the switch on this. Uh, but it does look like we have. Yep, yeah, we filled up. We're almost filled up on on um, dirt so if I switch this dirt will start popping out and also I need to change it so the mesh isn't uh, kind of colliding with this thing right here great so this is one very 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 basic item uh, basic example of what you can do with the rigs so later on um, basically as, as the development goes further I want to be able to make more and more parts to actually put on the rigs to kind of expand the creativity that players can use with this. So that's going to do it for this week. Uh, next week I'm going to be working on setting up everything for the closed alpha. Uh, more about that in the in next video. Um, but basically I've got a list of things to do just to prepare everything, get the game ready. Also I'm almost at 100 subscribers. Uh, if you haven't already please subscribe, uh, maybe tell a friend about the YouTube channel, I don't know. I also got that giveaway I do every week. Um, so if you want to, if you want the chance to win a copy of the Scuttle, my previous game, uh, leave a comment and like the video, subscribe, and in a few days I'll go into the comment section and pick one of those out and send you a free key. And also, the closed alpha is going to be happening in around July time, and the best way to get into that is if you head over to my Patreon and join the two dollar tier. That'll get you access to the closed alpha when it goes live next month. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm having lots of fun with this project still and there's so much more development to be had. Um, but I really want to get it into people's hands. So guys, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.